Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This should be part five of the Mystery of Babylon series. I'm hoping we'll close it out. One thing we're going to do is we're going to identify what is Babylon in the end times. Now, from the previous studies, physical Babylon was destroyed, and the Lord said it would never again be inhabited. But there's a spiritual Babylon. Now, there's many candidates. Uh, I've heard people say it's the USA. I've heard people say it's Rome, uh, Moscow, Jerusalem. Uh, we're going to use only the Bible. I don't care so much about history. I don't care about other people's opinions. Uh, get, so get out your King James Bible. I know we've read this chapter a number of times, but hey, we're going to read it again. Because, you know, people... Uh, the most of, the majority of people in the church world, at least in America, they don't think they're going to be here for the end times. They think they're going to be up in heaven, I guess, playing a, a violin on a cloud uh, in the pre-trib rapture. You know, they, they think everybody else is going to go through tribulation and troubles, but uh, they're not going to. So let's take a look. All right, get your King James Bible. I'm going to do something a little different here. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 4. People don't think of uh, the Old Testament as having reference to the end times, but uh, hey, it does. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 23. Take heed unto yourselves, lest ye forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you. Did you know God made a covenant with us? Oh yeah, he did. Lest ye forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and make you a graven image. You know, an idol, right? Or the likeness of anything which the Lord thy God hath forbidden thee. Isn't the image of the beast, isn't that going to be a graven image? And the majority of people in this world are going to worship the image of the beast. So he says, Take heed unto yourselves, lest ye forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and make you a graven image or the likeness of anything which the Lord thy God hath forbidden forbidden thee for the Lord thy God is a consuming fire doesn't the Bible say that the earth's going to be uh, destroyed with fire oh yeah it does I did an entire series on fire for the Lord thy God is a consuming fire even a jealous God when thou beget uh, when thou shalt begat children and children's children, and ye shall have remained long in the land, and shall corrupt yourselves, oh boy, that's America today, and shall corrupt yourselves, and make a graven image or the likeness of anything, and shall do evil, evil in the sight of the Lord thy God, to provoke him to answer, uh, to provoke him to anger. I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day that ye shall soon utterly perish from off the land. That's getting ready to happen, people. Whereunto ye shall go over Jordan to possess it, ye shall not prolong your days upon it, but shall utterly be destroyed. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations." And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen. What's going on in Europe? What's going on in America? 
where you are few in number among the heathen. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. And there ye shall serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him. You see, people, when you seek the Lord with all your heart, you're going to find him. But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him, if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. When thou art in tribulation, what's tribulation? Trouble. When thou art in tribulation, and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days. Wow, the latter days. What does that mean? It's Old English or Middle English for last days. Even in the last days, people. When thou art in tribulation and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, if thou turn to the Lord thy God and shall be obedient unto his voice. Now, people, let me tell you something. Uh, works are not what gets you to heaven. But when, you're, when you belong to the Lord and you love the Lord, you're going to be obedient. I mean, it's just like, you know, when you're little children and your parents tell you, you know, don't cross the street without looking both ways for cars. Uh, you know, does looking both ways for cars make you the children of your parents? No. It had nothing to do with your conception, nothing at all to do with it. You are, they are your parents and you are their child. But being obedient to them is, well, it's, you know, it's the fruit of the Spirit. When you're, you know, that's the thing. Being obedient to the Lord doesn't save you. But if you are saved, being obedient will be part of the fruit of the Spirit. That's just the way it is. So he says, If thou turn to the Lord thy God and shall, shalt be obedient unto his voice, verse 31, For the Lord thy God is a merciful God, he will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which ye swear unto them. Isn't that wonderful? So, how many people are going to do that? Be obedient and love the Lord. All right, in John 16, 33... These things have uh, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. Now this is Jesus speaking. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Acts fourteen twenty two, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Paul asks in Romans 8.35, he says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or the sword? And the answer is, nothing. Nothing will separate us from the love of Christ. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 7. Uh, I guess we'll start in verse 9. Uh, the verses prior to this are the 144,000 of the tribes of Israel, which are sealed. You know, I'm trying to 
not make this a super long study. All right, Revelation 7, verse 9. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. Remember the story about the woman at the well? And Jesus offered her living water? Oh, I hope you remember that story. When you drink the living water, you don't. You're not going to be thirst anymore. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. This is what we have to look forward to, people, but uh, the road to get there is going to be a little bit bumpy. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 18, verse 1. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, once physically, once spiritually, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. All nations, people. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. So, let's see. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. All right, so very important. Revelation 18 and verse 4, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works in the cup which she hath fill, uh, filled, filled to her double. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death 
and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her, and the kings of the earth, who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her, shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. Now we're going to identify this great city from Scripture alone. Verse 11. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thine wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon, and odors, and ointments, and frankincense, and wine, and oil, and fine flour, and wheat, and beasts, and sheep, and horses, and chariots, and slaves, and souls of men. And the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city, which was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, for in one hour so great riches is come to naught, to nothing." And every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads. They cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness, for in one hour is she made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. Now why would they say, Rejoice, ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her? Who killed the apostles? Who killed the prophets? Think about that. Because that's coming up. And a mighty, mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee, and no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. Now, does that mean that people aren't going to be getting married there? Or does that mean the voice of the bridegroom... Christ, and the bride, the church, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. Huh. Does that mean people aren't going to get married there because it's destroyed? Or does it mean the voice of Christ and the church shall be heard no more at all in thee? There's only one city that I know of in the world where Christianity is illegal. I'm going to give you a little hint. It's in the Middle East. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Ah, we're going to talk about those little sorceries. Verse 24. And in her, 
Who? Babylon. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all and of all that were slain upon the earth. Now, if New York City or Washington, D.C. was Babylon, like Stephen Anderson says, um, when did those either one of those cities kill the prophets? Or the saints? Did God send prophets to New York City or Washington, D.C.? Mm, I don't read it in the Bible. Uh, what about Moscow, Russia? No. Uh, Rome? Well, you could argue, yeah, God sent Paul, who was a prophet, to Rome. So... You could argue that, but where did God send his prophets to? Well, that's a good question. We're going to come up with that shortly. Now, in Revelation 17 and 18, And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Aha! There's a clue right there. Now, in Revelation 18, you know, verse 24, and it said, And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints, and of all, all that were slain upon the earth. Now, sometimes the word all does not necessarily mean all. Let's take a case in point. Paul writes in Romans 3.23, he says, for all have sinned, all have sinned, and come short of the glory of God. But in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 9, we read, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. For it became him... For whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory, and to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For both he that sanctifieth, and they that are sanctified, are all of one. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I am the children which God hath given me. Forasmuch then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil." And deliver them who, through fear of death, were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he, Christ, for verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. All right, verse 17. Wherefore, in all things, it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. Now, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Did Jesus sin? No. Hebrews 4.15 For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. You see, people, all sometimes has exceptions. Christ was one of those exceptions. Christ did not sin. If he did, we're in trouble. We better look for another Messiah, just like the uh, you-know-whos in the Middle East are. 
All right, who's this group of people or that were responsible for the death of the prophets and the saints and the apostles? Well, in Matthew 23, let's read what Jesus has to say. Verse 1. Then spake Jesus unto the, uh, then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Now the scribes were the copyists of the scriptures, and the Pharisees are a denomination of religious leaders. Uh, let's just say it rhymes with the word news. And they sit in Moses' seat. Verse 3. All therefore, whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works. In other words, do what they say, but don't do after they don't do what they do. For they say, and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. In other words, they'll stick you with uh, a lot of work, but with their little finger, they won't even touch it, right? But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the sin of gogs and greetings in the markets and to be called of men rabbi rabbi but be not ye called rabbi for one is your master even christ see a lot of people don't know it but the word rabbi means master i mean it tells you right here but be not ye called rabbi for one is your master even christ and all ye are brethren and call no man your father upon the earth. Huh. What do they call the Catholic priests? Oh, yeah. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Now, we're not talking about your dad, okay? I'm sure you can call your dad father. But uh, they're talking about a spiritual father here. Verse 10. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! Ooh, boy, doesn't Jesus know how to... He, he's supposed to be lo all this loving and kindness stuff, right? Uh, well, that's what the churches teach us, right? But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer or allow, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Wow. Jesus needs to learn some love here, huh? At least that's what some of the churches will tell you. You know, there's people that will tell you that this is mistranslated, that Jesus never said any of this. It was those evil Greeks those, um, that, that mistranslated all this because they had a, a hard-on, as they could say, um, against the group of people that rhymes with news. Uh, I guess that's the best way to say it, right? So, verse 14, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore shall receive, ye shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, ye make him twofold, more the child of hell than yourselves. How would you like to be twice the child of hell? No thanks. 
Woe unto you, ye blind guides, which say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. Ye fools and blind, for whither is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifieth the gold? And whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing. But whosoever sweareth by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. Ye fools and blind, for whither is greater the gift or the altar that sanctifieth the gift? Whoso therefore shall swear by the altar, sweareth by it and by all things thereon. And whosoever, and whoso shall swear by the temple, sweareth by it and by him that dwelleth therein. And he that shall swear by heaven, sweareth by the throne of God and by him that sitteth thereon. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. Oh yeah, they major on the minors and minor on the majors. That's how it works. Instead of teaching judgment, mercy, and faith, they teach tithing. Doesn't that sound familiar today? It's amazing. I hear churches all the time say, all the laws were, the Old Testament laws, they were a nailed a, to the cross, a praise of Jesus. Except for the tithe law, of course. you got to pay tithes to uh, us. That's what they'll tell you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, pay your tithes to God. Here's our address. First Baptist Church of uh, whatever, right? Well, I, I pick on the Baptist because I went to a Baptist Bible sem cemetery. I, I'm sorry, uh, seminary, Bible college. Yeah. So I, I guess I'm allowed to pick on them. So, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. Ye blind guides, which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are like under whited sepulchres, that's a grave people, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Boy, Jesus doesn't pull any punches here, does he? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build... Oh, boy, listen to this. Now, remember, the scribes and the Pharisees are a group of religious people, and their word, their name, rhymes with news. Okay? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchers of the righteous, and say, If we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them that killed the prophets." Let's go back to Revelation 18, verse 24. And in her, who? Babylon. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Wow, doesn't Jesus know it was New York City? Washington, D.C.? Uh, Rome? Doesn't Jesus know this? Come on, somebody send Jesus a memo here. He, you know, who is this guy? 
Matthew 23, 31. Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourself that ye are the children of them that which killed the prophets. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers. Ye serpents. Very important word there, serpents. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Good question. Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets, and wise men, and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them ye shall scourge in your sin of gogs, and persecute them from city to city. Listen carefully, that upon you may come all, all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel, huh? From the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barcheus, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar? Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets. Who killed the prophets? Oh, everybody knows it's Rome, right? Uh, somebody tell Jesus he doesn't know what he's talking about here. If you listen to your modern TV preachers. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Babylon killed the prophets. Jesus said, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets. When did God make a covenant with New York City, Washington, D.C., Rome, Moscow, Seattle, Istanbul? All those cities have seven hills, from what I understand. Well, maybe not New York, but all the rest of them have seven hills. Jerusalem's got seven hills too, people. How can you got to realize something? In time, Jerusalem, they're going to have the beast. Now, Satan in times past, he wanted to be worshipped. That's why there was a war in heaven. He tried to kill God. Didn't work. Sorry, that that slot, that job, that slot is already taken. Um, he got kicked out. And uh, he's been attacking our parents, Adam and Eve, ever since. Why would Jesus say, though, the blood of righteous, uh, the blood of Abel? Why would, he, why would he trace it all the way back to Cain? That's interesting, huh? You know, why would Jesus trace Mystery Babylon back to Cain? Well, let's take a look at 1 John chapter 3 and verse 12. It says, not as Cain, who was of, of, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother, and wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. Now, it doesn't say he was like the wicked one. It doesn't say he followed the wicked one. He said he was, who was of that wicked one. Now, ladies... When you're making a birthday cake, what is a birthday cake made of? It's made of flour, butter, flavorings, probably chocolate or vanilla, right? Egg, uh, oil, you know, that's what a cake is made of. A cake doesn't follow flour and butter and flavorings, no. A cake is made of flour and other ingredients. Guys, uh, a screwdriver. Now, I'm not talking about a tool. I'm talking about a drink. What's a screwdriver made of? It's made of vodka and orange juice, right? 
I don't know. I haven't had one in many, many, many years. Many, many years. Matter of fact, I drank more when I was underage than when I became of age. But uh, that's another story. Screwdrivers are made of vodka and orange juice. They don't follow vodka. They don't, they're not like vodka. They are. They're made of. So not as Cain who was of that wicked one. Now, let's go to Matthew chapter 13, verse 24. Another parable put he, Jesus, another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares, or weeds, and sowed tares among the wheat, and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? You know, didn't you sow wheat in this field? Look at all these weeds. What's going on here? Verse 28, he said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said also unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? And he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, now, people, this is the end time. This is the book of Revelation right here. Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares. Do you know the weeds get bundled? They get gathered first? This verse right here alone destroys the pre-trib rapture. The weeds get gathered first. Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Verse 34. All these things Jesus, uh, spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. In other words, uh, no comprende, niche verstehen. Uh, we don't get it. Explain this to us, please. Verse 37. Matthew 13. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. Now, the Bible says, we just read where it said Cain was of that wicked one. You got a choice. Is Adam if Adam was the father of Cain, then Adam's the wicked one. Is there another wicked one? Huh. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is Adam? No. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. I'm sorry, I don't think Adam was the devil. Sorry. Verse 41. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire, 
There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. So why would Jesus say that they were responsible for all the blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel unto Zacharias? I, I will leave you with those few thoughts and you can figure it out on your own. Let's identify Mystery Babylon from the Bible. All right, so in Revelation 18, 24, And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Babylon was responsible for the blood of prophets. Revelation 16, 6, For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Revelation 17, 6. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Babylon killed the prophets, people. Jesus speaking in Luke 13, 33. Jesus says, Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following for it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Rome, no, uh, uh, New York City, Washington, D.C., Moscow, no. For it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. For it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. Again, Matthew 23 37, Jesus speaking, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem. He's not saying, O Rome, Rome. No. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. In Revelation 11 and verse 8, they're talking about God sends his two witnesses unto the great city. And then the beast ascends out of the bottomless pit and kills them. So let's read Revelation 11 and verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. The great city. Let's identify the great city which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Sodom, right? Sodom and Gomorrah. What did God do to Sodom and Gomorrah? He burned them up, right? Fire and brimstone. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually, spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Now, people will tell you this is Rome. Was Jesus crucified in Rome? Was, was their Lord crucified in Rome? No, I tell you what, Jesus, my Lord, was crucified in Jerusalem, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. And then they'll tell you, oh, well, you know, uh, well, the Romans crucified Rome. Well, did they, you know... Uh, uh, let's let's read what Paul has to say in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, 14 through 16. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the news. Now, you know, you know it. It starts with a J and rhymes with news even as they have of the news, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets. It wasn't Rome, people. It wasn't Rome. Who killed, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets. God never sent the prophets to Rome. And have persecuted us, and they please not God. And they please not God, and are contrary to all men, 
forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins alway, for the wrath, for the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. Wow. What can I tell you, people? I mean, it's pretty, you know, let's read Matthew 23, 34 again. Wherefore, behold, I, Jesus, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall ye scourge in your sin of gogs, and persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barcheus, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I gather thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chicken, chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. People, think about it. Now, remember in um, when they were talking about all the merchandise in of gold and silver and costly stones and cinnamon and all that other stuff? When you look in the book of Leviticus, all those things were used in temple worship. Everything. All those things were used in temple worship. Now, I'm not... If somebody disagrees with me, there's, that's fine, but I truly believe that they, there will be another temple built in the end times. Uh, if you want to, you can take a look at it. There's a group called the Temple Mount Faithful, and there's another group called the Temple Institute. And between the two of them, they have assembled all the materials needed for another temple. Matter of fact, there's a temple in uh, San Paulo, I think it's called, Brazil. There's a full-size scale replica of a temple in Brazil. Uh, matter of fact, they found a red heifer in, I think, Pennsylvania, in the United States. And uh, they imported it over to the Israeli state, and it was kind of a consecration kind of thing. You burn it, and you take the ashes, and then you use that for like a ceremonial cleansing. People, Satan wants worship. And this would be the ultimate act of blasphemy against the Lord. I mean, taking the holy city of David and turning it into the beast system. I mean, that would be, you know, the ultimate in blasphemy. It really would. Think about it. I mean, God never made a covenant with Rome or the Vatican. Never. No, not that I know of. Not in the Bible. If it's in there, somebody show me, please. But think about it. That would be the ultimate blasphemy. So why wouldn't he do that? I mean, it, to me, it makes perfect sense. Now, I'm going to do a, another quick video on... Uh, who, what city reigns over the kings of men? It's mostly going to be a slideshow. So I want you to take a few a look at some of the pictures. So, all right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.